Hello my friends, welcome to another video. So today I'm going to show you something really, really simple and really, really fun that creates a really, really beautiful painting. So as you can see out on the canvas, which is a 16 by 20 primed black canvas from Hobby Lobby, I have a bunch of different brands of paints. Mostly they are a medium body paint, all except for the new Vivid Intense line that I'm going to be using from Color Art. So these are a fluid acrylic paint, much thinner than your average tube paints. They are semi-transparent. So I'm going to get some nice depth from adding things like semi-transparent paints with opaque paints. You'll see as I go along. These are extremely pigmented. You do not need a lot for them, especially if you're using them for acrylic pouring, which I will be doing in this video also on the second step of the journey. As you can see, I also have a bunch of paint brushes out that I'm going to be doing a lot of pouncing action in step one with. So here is the plan. We're going to pounce on a background which is going to resemble a galaxy and then I'm going to come in with some good old American flow trawl and we are going to use the American flow trawl for a flood coat okay I'm going to show you how to do this and what that's going to do for us is it's going to preserve our original background but then we're going to be able to do an acrylic pour on top of that without ruining the design underneath so it's a pretty cool idea all right so i'm gonna get set up and we're gonna get started you're gonna notice first of all i'm wearing gloves whenever you plan on doing a finish when your painting is done with resin you don't want to have your bare hands all over the canvas especially if you're doing something like i'm doing here where i'm going to be painting it with a brush first you know there's chances that i'm going to put my hands down and kind of brush you don't want to get your natural oils on the canvas because the resin, what will happen is you'll see little pitting areas where the resin kind of pushes away on the canvas. So to avoid that, I'm going to wear gloves at all times throughout this video. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to pick my darkest colors, put them down first and kind of build on top of them with the lighter colors. This is going to be a very, very simple thing to do. I'm just going to squeeze some ultramarine, I'm sorry, Windsor Blue, Windsor and Newton on the can, on the can, <laughs> off to a great start, on the canvas, and then I'm going to come in with one of my little pouncing brushes here, and just start pouncing away. We'll do some blending with the colors. All right, it's not going to be this bright when it's all said and done. We're just kind of starting off here. Nothing too complicated. Very simple. I like it to be easy peasy for everyone, including myself. We want this to be enjoyable and not stressful. Kind of pounce it around. Come in with a bigger one. Kind of just spread it out a bit. You can do a sweeping motion back and forth if you want.
Alrighty, darling. So I'm going to add the next color down, which is going to be cobalt blue. And again, it's just going to be the same thing. So what I'm going to do until there's something of importance to tell you is put you on a little bit of a time lapse so we could get through this section quickly and get onto the fun stuff. So I've given you a few tips on blending there and what you can do to make your life a lot easier, what kind of items you can use, brush strokes, things like that. So now this is going to be the area you see me starting to form where I'm going to have the lightest color kind of jetting out. And um, so now I'm going to lay down some of my pink colors and some of my lighter colors. I also wanted to incorporate some of these colors into the main painting, the main er surrounding areas of the uh, focal point there in the center. So I'm just adding some of those magentas. I have a very light pink, and these are all semi-transparent. The vivid, intense colors that I'm using are all semi-transparent. Then uh, this pink from Amsterdam is also so I continue to just lay down my colors until I'm happy with how the background looks. So I left this funny moment in here. I want to use this magenta by Amsterdam. Open the lid. I'm pushing, pushing. Nothing's coming out. Can't figure out why. And lo and behold, this happens. The cap closed on me. I didn't see it. So I'm squirting and I'm squirting and it's all shooting into the cap. So I had quite the mess from that one, but we ended up using most of that paint anyway. So I'm just finishing up with this first step and then we're going to move on to the next.
Okay. I love that. You got the little bit of light poking from the background. Absolutely happy with that background. So now what I'm going to do is take some fluid paint, white paint that is, and I'm going to put it on my mat here. I'm going to spray it with a little bit of water. Just like that. I'm going to mush it around. Just like so. Okay. And then I'm going to take my paintbrush and another paintbrush and I'm going to tap the brush that has the paint on it so we can get our stars. And then we're going to let it all dry. Okay, so this is all dry. Now the next step I need to do is I need to get my flow trial prepared. For that, I need to strain it. You always, always, always want to strain your flow trial because it has clumps in it. And you don't want that in your painting or in your paints that you thin down with this stuff because then you'll have a big bump in your finish. So this is just from the jug. The jug is too heavy for me to hold this strainer with one hand and pour it into the strainer. So I just put some into a cup. And as you can see, I'm just straining it. So this is what we're going to be putting on our canvas instead of white paint. What it's going to do is it's going to dry clear. And then you'll be able to see that beautiful painting underneath. Also... What I'm going to do is I'm going to mix my colors with some Floetrol, but more importantly, when I'm blowing them around, I'm also going to use some clear Floetrol as almost kind of imagine it as being my white to create some depth and movement in the colors. All right. So see all that? That would have all ended up in my painting had I not done that. So that's why you really want to strain it. Let me show you how easy it is to mix these new Vivid Intense paints. So pour some Floetrol in a cup, add a few drops of whatever color you're going to use, mix it up. You have the perfect consistency for most all acrylic pour techniques. All right. It's a lot thinner, that paint, than, it, than a tube paint is. So adding it to the Floetrol just by itself creates the perfect consistency. No water needed. Now, if you go ahead and uh, mix it up and it's not dark enough, add a few more drops. This is very concentrated. So a little bit at a time until you reach the right color. That's the perfect consistency. That consistency right there with those two products is good for all of your acrylic pours, like your flip cups, rain pours, and I will even be able to blow it around on the canvas, okay? So that's why I like fluid paints, because they're just so simple when it comes to the consistency thing. Now with these guys, it's a different story. So I'm going to add about a grape size amount of paint. Add a little of the flow trawl at first to get it mixed in. Make sure we don't have a clumper on our hands. I could tell that one won't won't uh clump, so I could go ahead and dump it in there. So I'll fill it up about about three quarters of the way, not exactly. Nothing is exact in acrylic pouring. Right, and that's perfect now. Okay. 
So that's how I'm going to mix my colors. And again, I'm going to be using straight flow troll for the base coat. And I'm also going to be using it to add in between like some colors to create some depth and some negative spaces in my in my painting, okay? Okay, first thing I'm gonna do is cover the entire thing with the flow trawl. Just clear flow trawl. Nothing else. Just run your hands down the side. It's not like it's going to be paint or anything like that that you're going to be seeing. Let's just run your hands down the side. And now we're ready to begin. So when I designed the painting, I put that light center in the area, the lightest area in the center. So I'm going to put my paints down and kind of blow them out towards the edges and kind of just move them around and such. So... It's going to be very sporadic because I don't want big areas of just one color. So this is some of the dioxazine violet that I'm adding down. And now you see me pouring a little more of that clear Floetrol, uh, some magenta. These are the vivid intense colors. Now, at this point, I already knew I added way too much color. So I'm going to work with this painting. I'm going to end up removing some, blowing it around, adding a lot more of that clear flow trial because what I'm trying to do is I'm trying to get it so this galaxy looks like it has depth and movement to it. And I'm very happy to let you know ahead of time that it worked great. So essentially by adding that clear flow trial over the hand painted surface, once this all dries, you're going to see only the colors right now that you're seeing me blow around. You're going to see those dried, however they dry, and all the areas that are going to be white are going to be clear. So you're going to see that layer upon layer look.
what I ended up doing here with the stick ended up being what the painting needed. I should have essentially started off that way and just laid down a little bit of color and swirled it through the flow trowel with a stick. However, I'm one of those believers in everything happens for a reason. And I believe I needed to go through all of this to get to what I ended up with. So now I'm just filling in those gaps I made with the stick with the clear flow trowel. I'll let it level out on its own in some areas, use the blow dryer to assist it just a little bit in others. Then we will let it dry. And up next, you're gonna see how amazing this dried and the outcome. Check it out. I am so happy with the depth that this created. I'm going to do a little bit more work on it and add in my planets, but check it out. So you can see here, this is where I took the color and swirled it around with the stick. See how it looks like it's floating over the original uh, hand painting I did over here also. You can see this is where I kind of folded the paint over uh, with the stick and blended those colors kind of through the flow trowel and it created this beautiful lacing. So that all dried beautifully over here. I mean, this looks like a, a real moving galaxy. I mean, you could display it this way. You can display it this way. But again, I still have to put the planets in and then I want to put some resin on it. But I love, love, love the center and how that color is just jetting out. It, to me, looks like a galaxy. You can still see our original stars that we did, all right? And that's because in that clear flow trawl, I used semi-transparent, vivid, intense fluid paints. So had I used opaque paints, it would have covered this. You wouldn't have seen any of it. So you have to use those semi-transparents, but I am very, very happy with this. So let me get working on it to finish it up. Just a, a few more things and we will be done.
All right, so a little change of plans here. I just painted on some basic planets. The rest of the work I'm going to do with my resin, but before I put my resin down, I decided to use some of this beautiful hologram glitter by Montana. I got that at Blick. And I don't know if you can see it or not, but this baby is loaded with sparkle now. So it's very hard to see, but there is a lot of holographic glitter on there from that spray paint. There you go. Now you can see it. I thought that would be a nice touch. So I give it a beautiful holographic effect. So like I said, let me add some resin now. I'm going to put down some clear resin. Um, a few of the, I'll do a couple of colors, but very minimal. I'm going to control myself. I'm always heavy handed with those colors, but this time I'm going to be very careful because all I want to do is add some uh, movement around this planet to cover just a little bit of it up. I want to add some color over here, over here. All right, so we'll get things flowing here and finish this up. So all of my resin pigments come from artiststilldeath.com. They have a full array, full store of all the best brands, all the colors, and there's a discount for them for not only this, but everything in their shop, which, you know, I buy my wood rounds, shapes, everything from them. So I mixed up some KS resin, uh, the liquid art version of that one, and added my colors just a tiny bit to the resin and put down some clear resin, spread it out with my hand, laid down some of the colors, as I explained earlier, just in a few random spots, blew them around, and then I came in with some of my favorite gold of all time, Liquid Gold by MTN, and I put some of that into the painting, and it just made it complete. I'll explain more of that when we get to that part. However, if you like resin and you want to learn about it, I have a lot of videos. Just type in YouTube Tammy Anderson Art, Resin Art, or even look on my uh, channel in the playlist. You'll see some resin videos. I also have a resin channel. I haven't uploaded it uploaded to it in quite a long time. I should really get that started again, but uh, I have tons of tutorials on this channel too. I will be sure to list the colors of the resin pigments that I used in the description below. So now I come in with the heat gun and I just like this, blow the air in like circular motions and just kind of work that color out so it looks like a hazy fog or cloud that's floating over those planets. This creates so much depth in the piece. It is just unbelievable. You can actually look at this painting in real life and it looks like you can grab one of these, I'll call them clouds. Resin in general just creates beautiful, beautiful artwork. So once I get done blowing this color around, I take my liquid gold straight from the can, do not mix it into the resin, and I put a couple of drops onto the resin surface, and with the, the heat gun, I heat it up, and it kind of does this effect where it looks like it's flecks of gold that are floating through the resin. You're going to see here. So just one drop, hit it with the heat, blow it around, move it a little bit, and it breaks up. It makes this beautiful effect. So I did some, some more of this, and then once I was done with this, put it to bed to dry, and now you're going to see the final results. Oh my goodness. I love, love, love this. I'm glad I added the gold. Got some really cool effects from that. So you can see how it kind of broke up 
when I just dripped it in there uh, raw. Didn't mix it into the resin. And just apply a little bit of heat to it. This has so much dimension, this painting. It's not even, it's not translating on camera, trust me. And of course it's daytime, so I don't know how well you'll see that sparkle, but it's there. And now we have the gold. This is magnificent. So thank you for joining me today, my friends. I want to let you know, even though I said it in the beginning, there will be no video this Wednesday due to the Thanksgiving holiday. But I want to wish you that celebrate a happy Thanksgiving. And I will see you back here next Sunday, 3.30 p.m. Please remember to leave a comment. Don't forget to hit that like on the way out. And if you're not subscribed, please consider doing so. I love you all. Thank you so very much for joining me again. And until the next time, happy pouring.